Hello and welcome back to Dental Basics with me, Dr. Parvati Raghavan. Stomatitis nicotina palati or smoker's palate, also called as smoker's patch, is a keratotic white lesion that is leukokeratosis. It comes under the category of precancerous lesions of the oral cavity. It is seen clinically as red spots against white in areas where majority of the palatal mucus glands are located and is more prominent and well-developed in the keratinized hard palate, though also seen in the soft palate. In the hard palate, it is present posterior to the rugae and anterior to the soft palate and seen in the form of raised umbilicated papules with red central depressions. These papules are blocked palatal mucus glands and red are their inflamed duct openings. And here, this is the actual lesion in the patient's mouth. Breaking down the word stomatitis nicotina palati, as the name suggests, stoma means mouth and itis is inflammation and this is due to nicotine and occurs in the palate. It is seen in heavy smokers who have been smoking for years and years together. It could be cigarettes or pipe or cigars. It is most common in people who smoke pipe and cigars. So why should we know about this? There are two reasons. They have a dramatic appearance and can be easily identified. So they can be used to educate patients about the hazards of smoking. Because smoker's palate is just one of the spectrum of changes that occurs in the oral mucosa of chronic heavy smokers. So this can also help us dentists to check the smoker's mouth for leukoplakia and erythroplakia and other more susceptible non-keratinized mucosa like the soft palate and fossas. Fossas is the area in the mouth between the base of the tongue and the soft palate above which leads to the pharynx. Cause extreme chronic heat along with chemical irritation from tobacco. The palate is involved because during smoking, the intensity of heat and smoke are first focused towards the palate. The lesions are localized to those areas of the palate exposed to a relatively concentrated jet of tobacco smoke. Other predisposing factors also include vitamin B complex deficiency, intake of very spicy food and very hot beverages like tea, coffee, etc. An interesting observation is that in smokers who wear dentures, areas covered by the upper denture are not affected. Let us move to the palate and take a closer look at the mucous membrane there. Hard palate is hundreds of mucus secreting minor saliva glands that open into the palate via ducts. Their ducts have irregular contours with large distensions. In stomatitis nicotina, there is squamous metaplasia of the ductal epithelium, where the mucus secreting glandular epithelium are replaced by stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified means layer and squamous means flat cells. So these are formed for protection. Epithelial cells inside the duct proliferate and plug the lumen. Due to this, palatal mucus glands get blocked. They show inflammation and swelling. The plugging and the inflammatory exudate together produce the characteristic bumps that you see. Exudate of fluids and cells and cellular substances discharge from the blood vessels of an inflamed tissue. This blockage may also lead to the formation of small retention cysts. The general mucosa of the palate responds to all this by hyperkeratosis, that is increased keratin growth, which may also be in the form of parakeratosis, where keratinocytes do not mature completely and show abnormal retention of nuclei. Chronic inflammation leads to acanthosis, that is benign overgrowth of the spinous layer. There is also edema and infiltration of plasma cells and lymphocytes in the epithelium and connective tissue around the salivary glands and their ducts. And this is the histology of this condition.
Clinically, in the initial stages, the general background of the mucosa of the palate appears red. Over a period of time, it changes to grayish white because of hyperkeratosis, and this is benign hyperkeratosis. Then it becomes thickened and fissured. In this image, you can see that it is stained brown by the tar from smoke. As a dentist, when you show such lesions to the patient that they have it in their mouth, they say it's painless. Yes, but these areas have the potential to turn precancerous. Now the good news is that these lesions can reverse to normal when smoking is stopped. It is also a fact that squamous cell carcinoma of the heart palate and carcinoma of the palatal minor salivary glands are rare. So the lesions of smoker's palate are precancerous but with no increased potential to develop into oral cancer. However, there's always this however. In reverse smoking, where some people put the burning end of the cigarette inside their mouth, Stomatitis nicotina is also associated with epithelial dyskeratosis along with leukoplakic lesions of the palate. Dyskeratosis means abnormal, premature or imperfect development of the keratinocytes. Now this condition shows an increased incidence of carcinoma. So this is the more dangerous one. Before finishing, let me share some interesting facts about the palate with you. The palatine glands are purely mucus. They are present in several hundreds in the lamina propria of the hard palate, but in the submucosa in the soft palate and the uvula. They are absent in the gingiva and anterior part of the hard palate. Did you know that uvula in Latin means little grape? Let me know in the comment box below whether you think there is any correlation between the lesions occurring in the heart palate and the glands here being present in the lamina propria. Thank you for watching. Do leave a comment, give this video a thumbs up, share, and if you enjoy this video, want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You can also click on any of these links given here to watch a video of your choice.